My name is Yuhei Nishioka. I'm a pro uh, director of product management at uh, the Smanius and responsible for the uh, delivery algorithm uh, in Sma at Smanius. I joined Smanius. Uh, sorry, today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, okay. I joined Smanius four years ago in 2014. The company is only six years old, so I can say that I know the uh, majority of Smanius history in detail. So before I joined Smanius, I worked for Rakuten, the biggest e-commerce company in Japan. I developed the uh, recommendation system, and it was used widely for many years. I was happy with the previous job, uh, but uh, one day, Kaisei, the conf as a, one of the co-founder of Smanius, uh, and my old friend came to me and persuaded me to join Smanius. It was uh, very small uh, at that time, but uh, his passion and the team and uh, their work was very attractive. And I decided to join Smanius. Uh, it was uh, uh, definitely, uh, looking, back, uh, looking back now, it was definitely uh, right, the right decision. Another big decision I made, I made, uh, I made was to move to the United States three months ago uh, with my family. Uh, so I believe this is also right decision. And uh, I, I'll explain the later uh, de detail. Okay. So this is the agenda. Uh, we have three topics, the smart news story, and news app landscape, and the smart news algorithm. Let's start with the smart news story. So smart news is now broadcasting a TV commercial. Have you seen that? Ah, OK, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I'll show you, I'll show it here. I agree with you. I was only getting news from social media. Now I use smart news. It has news from all sides. I, I trust smart, smart news. news. Download smart news for free today. Thank you. What is our company? <laughs> we are news app company. <laughs> okay. So And uh, Smanius was founded in 2012, and Smanius is one of the top news app in Japan and the US. We use machine learning to deliver higher quality news to the world, uh, news to deliver news to the world. Uh, let me introduce uh, some numbers. Over 30, mil over 30 million downloads, over 90 dollar million raised in funding, and uh, uh, he said that, uh, uh, so in total, we have uh, 200 uh, employees in uh, the different locations. And we were selected the best app of the year. So we reached another growth milestone in the US and Japan uh, three months ago, over 10 million monthly active users. I, I was so happy with this number. I, I'm very excited that so many people enjoy our service. So, uh, so and we have 200 percent years of year over year growth in the U U.S. user base. Uh, we now have the bigger growth rate in U.S. than Japan. And uh, according to the app Ani, it's an analytics company. Uh, we are number one news user engagement. So please try our app, <laughs> and I believe you will like it too. Okay, this is a screenshot of our news app. Okay, how does the system work? Uh, simply speaking, our system is correcting uh, lots of signals and articles uh, by at 24/7 by crawling websites and. Uh, uh, receiving feeds, it analyzes those data and it selects the important articles and delivers it. Two smart news uh, publishers are as, as important as users. 
uh, we want them to make a business on news, our news app, and we want to contribute to a content ecosystem. And uh, so th this number is uh, not, not Apple to Apple, and uh, but uh, we have a lot of a uh, bunch. Of, we have lots of uh, published pa partners, and uh, here I showing the a big publisher, but the, we have lots of small publishers uh, with partner as a partner. So thanks to all the partners, we are able to deliver deliver the variety of articles. Okay, this is a Tokyo office. We have a cafe and a good soft, a good couch. <laughs> and we have San Francisco office. And also we have New York office. And now we are preparing the Palo Alto office. So this is a car train station. Now a uh, new Palo Alto office is here. So it is very close to Stanford. I want to uh, have. I would. I want to have a lunch or a coffee with you, <laughs> if we have time. Okay, and so we are next now expanding. Looking back, uh, looking back at the beginning of Smanius, uh, around the ten server, around the ten servers were running in Kaisei's room. Uh, this is uh, one of the co-founders. I think it looks dark and lonely. <laughs> But we have a lot of members now. We just have had a, a global meetup last week, and all of US members visited Japan and had sessions and uh, work closely together. And this is a picture of the party uh, held in held in held last week. Uh, so some of them uh, Took uh, family there, so you can see uh, you can see the, some babies. They are not employees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yet, yet. <laughs> so, um, so when when Kaisei came to me, uh, Smanius had uh, less than ten people, but now uh, I'm happy that we are expanding to big this big now. So we are challenging. Uh, difficulty problems uh, together. So, next topic about the uh, news app landscape. So, how do you read the news? So, we are, we are from uh, news from. So, this is a trend of source of news. So, the left one is that of uh, Japan, and uh, the right one is that of the US. So we have some findings. So print, uh, print is different newspaper. <laughs> it's definitely downtrend. Sorry, in front of the newspaper. <laughs> newspaper. The a culture of print is in, in Japan. It's very popular, but the, uh, it went down to less than 40% in 2018. And the US in downtrend of 2000, U.S. downtrend 2018, but this trend is uh, caused by the spike of uh, 2017 uh, because of Trump. And but the uh, Japan, uh, everything downtrend. So I worry about it. Anyway, why, what I want to say uh, here: online news keeps high in U.S. Uh, on, online news will get more important in the future. I think. So, which, dev uh, which device do you use to uh, read news online? Fan. Uh, a computer or a laptop is uh, keep still high, but in the US, uh, the more people access news via smartphone and, uh, than uh, by a computer or a laptop for the first time in 2018. So this is a turning point and good for Smanius, but because the main target of Smanius is a smartphone. Okay, let me introduce another opinion, an uh, interesting opinion. So there is an important annual event about journalists uh, called the Online News Association. Uh, Kushida-san explained. Uh, more than 2,000 people 
uh, participate each year, and we participate uh, every year. One of the uh, founder of ONA is Rich. So I wanted, I attended the last year and this year. And we have a session. Um, she is a professor and a futurist. She talks. She talks about the future of journalism. I like this session. So because she is powerful and some humor, and her prediction is uh, looks very reasonable. So you can watch. You can watch her session on the web. So this year's talk starts with uh, with 2018 is the beginning of the end of smartphones. So it makes it makes sense to me. So because uh, we have lots of emerging technologies such as smart speakers and AR VR, so we have to think about the uh, new devices for the future. But at but at that time, smartphone is most important for me. So, what is a gateway to news? Where do you start reading news? This is a chat and of for gateway in the world. So, direct means uh, uh, visiting a publisher such directory. Search means including the Google, uh, Google search. Social media including the Facebook and the Twitter and the aggregator uh, includes the Google News or uh, uh, Smart News, a uh, Flipboard, and the email and the mobile alerts include the uh, uh, publishers, newsletter, or uh, uh, aggregators alert or everything. So before the in internet, we get uh, from the publishers or broadcaster directory only. Uh, but now uh, it changed. So many of you, many of users uh, use a side door access. So in this chat, social media, social media and the search is big. Let's look into by it into by country. So this is a chat by country. I can uh, so let's look at the US. This is a sim uh, similar with uh, the, uh, the, what, the previous one, but the, let's look at Japan. So quite different. So aggregator in Japan very strong now. So I hope that the news aggregator uh, gets more popular in US, in the US, and in the world. So okay. Let's look at the key points of each gateway uh, from my from my perspective. So I picked up the direct and the social media and the news aggregator. So because these uh, the context for these uh, is the same. So when you when you find some when you find uh, some specific topics, you will you will use such uh, email uh, as for email a lot. Uh, you will complete you will be completely passive. Uh, when you find something new, you will use direct social media or news aggregator. So we, uh, I put the two columns, news sources and the main factor for news selection. So di news of direct is usually uh, selected by spe human specialist from single site. On the other hand, social media and the news aggregator from multiple sites. And uh, I set the, uh, the main factor for news selection of social media is friend. So it is said that uh, social media select news with algorithm. Uh, it's true, but uh, in social media, news are selected from uh, only, news art only news article friends liked or shared. So I that's why I said uh, friends. Uh, that's why I I think uh, friends is important uh, more than algorithm in social media. And the selection of news aggregator is mainly algorithm. So in my in my uh, in my opinion, aggregator has a potential to deliver a wide variety of news uh, fairly. 
This is my opinion. So let's look at each market starting with Japan. This is the news up ranking last week for iOS. Smartness is number one. <laughs> Okay, and uh, num uh, number two is Yahoo. Yahoo is a traditional news, uh, traditional news aggregator still has a presence. Uh, Yahoo, is, Yahoo Inc. is no longer a major website in the US, but Yahoo Japan is still uh, the most popular website in Japan. This is interesting. Number three, Twitter. Number four, Google News. Number five is uh, Gunosi, is, uh, which is also a famous uh, news aggregator in Japan. Number, number six, Yahoo again. Number seven, Nikkei is a publisher. So you, you see the presence of a news aggregator. Let's move to the news, uh, US news market. Uh, I introduced one article published a couple uh, months ago. Uh, this is a this is titled The Best Alternative to the Google News uh, Mobile App in 2018. It introduced the Google News, Apple News, Microsoft News, Flipboard, Nazel, and Smart News. Uh, news aggregate market sh share is not big, but the, a very big company and the great uh, startups. So Smart News has to uh, provide our own value among those, these players. So in my opinion, so we have two differentiators. Uh, from uh, among news aggregators, first one is UIUX, second one is algorithm. You are different from uh, others. Smart News put multi uh, multiple headlines in one screen. So other news aggregator shows a big thumbnail and uh, put it one article, one headline in uh, one screen into one screen. This has pros and cons. Uh, but I think our method is better because uh, our app lets the users understand easily what's happening in the world. Also, Smart News has, uh, can scroll down and uh, swipe to the next topic. It is, it is very fast and responsive. So you can see, uh, user can see the bunch of uh, headlines easily, like the picture. And uh, the other one is algorithm. So we have a vision, personalized discovery. Uh, from here, I will explain the detail of this. The final section is smart news algorithm. OK. We have lots of uh, factors create algorithm. I divide it into four layers. Let me explain one by one. So first one, let's start with the mission and the team. Smart news, smart news mission is here, delivering into delivering the world's quality uh, information into the people who need it. So our all action for this mission. So to realize this mission, delivering algorithm is very important. We develop our own algorithm in both Japan and the US to realize the mission. So probably you have a question. So can a, a Japanese startup create an algorithm to achieve its mission for the US? So it is a very natural question. Uh, so the, this situation, uh, the situation in the US is quite different from Japan. So in the US, uh, Political polarization uh, is a serious issue. A few research centers have revealed the research that shows that this polarization became uh, pronounced before Trump administration. I was very surprised. Uh, even though I read these articles, I cannot, I cannot understand completely this situation from Japan. Definitely, it must be Hard, to, for, hard for Japanese startup to create algorithm for the US. But we have a bunch of commitments. I, let me introduce three uh, things. First one is the fact the most of employee in the US office is from the US. So 
like rich. <laughs> so we have a lot of talented people in the US office. So, so I am the only person, only one person work here uh, the, with the visa smart news took. So I heard uh, that smart, some of smart news, uh, some of Japanese startup sends a lot of people to the US. I think it doesn't work well. Okay, second one is a, a trip of CEO. So our founder and co, uh, and the co CEOs, Ken Suzuki and Kaisei Hamamoto, uh, traveled across the US uh, to run first hand uh, about the political polarization in the US. Ken, in particular, ha has a, a deep research background from Tokyo University. So he focused on he focused his research in swing counties, and although we uh, although we have a lot of anonymous user data user data about the reading behavior, uh, to understand complex issues, sometimes you need to uh, conduct first-hand field researches. So he traveled 22 states, uh, following Trump and Hillary during the election campaign. And also interview uh, Middle American of afterwards. So he learned uh, many surprising things. In particular, uh, Middle American tend to trust local media more than national media, even if they uh, differ on political views. Also, uh, may, uh, also many Middle Americans were excluded excluded from voting polls because they are on prepaid cell phones and many didn't have data plans at all. And most, important, most important, importantly, unlike Japan, most Americans said uh, they don't trust the news and uh, don't read it at all. They feel that the uh, word news means politics, Trump, uh, war, and gun violence. Uh, they shared uh, what he learned with employees uh, we learned. So the third one is moving to the US. I'm 41 years old, old now. So, so I'm too, uh, I'm too uh, old to move to the different country. Uh, it was very tough I, with my wife and my kid. I, I persuaded my wife to come here. So, but I really wanted to move to US to develop uh, algorithm for this country. So let me explain uh, my history in Smart News. I joined Smart News in 2014 and uh, before launching US edition. At that, at that time, we have we have very small team for server side. Our user base expanded rapidly but uh, uh, the system architecture was found, founders called Ken, uh, Kaisei's code and uh, not scalable. So I refactored to uh, refactored the server side system to modern architecture and I call it second generation. After refactoring all of the features and uh, improvements uh, developed on the top of that system. And in terms of algorithms, we, uh, we led to the uh, general ranking and political balancing and personalization uh, as a coder, as a, sometimes as an engineering manager, sometimes a product manager. So I will explain the detail later. So, to, uh, so it's now, it's, uh, it's time to focus on US. So I have to understand what's happening in the US and what the user need, truly need. So for that, I moved here, and now I'm tackling it. So next, machine learning. I will talk about machine learning. Smart News has used uh, lots of machine learning tec tec techniques since it released the uh, first version. So the world of machine learning is changing now rapidly. So, because of deep learning. So, have you heard of deep learning? 
Okay, so this is uh, this is one of just um, one method of machine learning, but it is surprise. It, it is amazing. Using deep learning, computer can classify image pedestrian and road car, and also uh, computer can uh, beat alpha pro pro uh, go player and. Uh, it's a dramatic improvement uh, of Google uh, translate, uh, much translation comes from deep learning. And uh, you can see the zebra at the right hand side of the side. So this is not uh, real, but computer generated. So computer can generate a very real image by deep learning. So it has changed completely uh, machine learning world for the past five or six years. Uh, using deep learning revolution happened in different places. Of course, Smarnius found that deep learning is very useful and activity utilize it. Let me, uh, let me show you one example. This screenshot uh, shows a special page for midterm election. To create this, we had to uh, identify uh, articles of midterm elections. Then we created a classifier for midterm election. So classification is a traditional machine learning problem. We already have a general machine learning uh, classifier like this. Machine can classify articles into the politics, entertainment, and so on. So this is a new uh, technology stack. Besides, so we are using the deep learning. And uh, besides deep learning, we are using the SageMaker. And it is a new service from AWS. Uh, the, uh, the, top, uh, the traditionally converting machine learning prototype into product into the product was very hard, but it made me easy. And also we are using the TensorFlow. It is nice open source, and it is kind of the de facto standard of uh, deep learning. This is a result we, suc we succeed in the transition to deep learning for uh, this task. Thanks to SageMaker, we have no machine. Uh, thanks to deep learning, we, we don't need uh, so natural language processing techniques. So. So now the data for training training is has become uh, significant more important for deep learning. So let me introduce an uh, interesting story. This is our current workflow of creating a new classifier. So we need we, we need a training data at first. So I uh, so training data means that. Uh, Low, low data and low level. So it means, uh, uh, for example, this article belongs to sports, this article belongs to politics, etc. So uh, to create, uh, now we are using uh, Figure 8, third party uh, crowd sourcing service to creating tra training data. They have a lot of crowd workers. Once we, once we provide the raw data and instruction, uh, how to classify, how to classify. So they uh, push, push back uh, training data to us. So it, and we create the uh, machine learning model and deploy it. So the quality of deep learning model heavily depends on the quality of training data now training data depends on raw data and instruction. So instruction is very important now. So I think writer for this instruction might be more important than engineers some, sometimes. So let's talk about uh, algorithm for, for news delivery system now. Today, I will introduce three major algorithms. Let's start with uh, general ranking algorithms. General ranking algorithm is not it's not personalized. We will generate the same article list of all users. So when you started with this algorithm from the beginning. 
So simply speaking, we collect the lots of data, external signals, internal signals, art article itself, and we calculate the freshness, popularity, and importance, and deliver to users. So we tweaked uh, this algorithm for many years and had a, a drastic change a couple of times. So let me share one example uh, of how this ranking algorithm is very important. On January, uh, January 13th, 2015, the headline 2016 uh, showed up on the top of our news app. So uh, this news is shared at Medium, not traditional uh, publish, not in traditional publishers. So small news uh, systems automatically detect this, this article and uh, select the uh, uh, top. And uh, in the US office, notice that fact on the small news. So Rich said it was, uh, it was a great ex experience. So this is one example of the power of the algorithm. OK, next algorithm is personalization. So our mission contains the quality information. Quality information is different for, different for each person. So, so we have to think, to realize our mission, uh, we have to think about the personalization. But developing a personalization uh, faces many technical challenges. So unlike e-commerce is, uh, un unlike e-commerce in which inventory remains uh, uh, for a long time, but the news inventory changing uh, always, we have to recommend the news article in timely manner. So our great engineers uh, effectively solved the problem using the two-phase uh, process. The, this is the first phase. We extract the, we extract the hundreds of articles from tens of thousands using a simple method. It doesn't, it, it, it is, it doesn't require a high computational cost. So we extract the hundreds of articles, uh, which roughly are relevant with uh, users. And the second phase, we extract tens from hundreds. So we can apply the high computational cost to hundreds of articles. We can select the relevant more precisely so that's how we realize the real-time online news recommendation system. So here is one example, Golden Story Warrior Lovers. We can see the Golden Story Warriors uh, articles. And the next example, this is a recommendation for my coworker who loves uh, tech and money. So, okay. The final one is uh, political balancing. So in 2016, we, uh, one challenge we are facing was to balance our news about politics. So my team member uh, tackled this problem. She analyzed the publishers with many features uh, and reduced the feature, de feature dimension by principal component analysis. A uh, powerful statistical, an statistical analysis uh, method. These axes, these axes are automatically selected, and she interpreted the, that meaning. So, so horizontal axis is a liberal and conservative, and vertical axis opinionated and objective. And, uh, that's how we develop the method to calculate the score for those axes without human bias. Facebook had a similar research, and we compared our result with Facebook's one. So we found a strong correlation. And at the same time, uh, of course, we checked the uh, result um, manually. And we found our method is valid. And unfortunately, I cannot disclose the detail of how we use these scores in our algorithm. But uh, we try to deliver uh, stories from both sides fairly. 
we think both sides of opinions are equally important. Okay. Here is one example of great reviews from App Store. Title is Escape uh, the Echo Room. So this user is a young, cons young conservative. Uh, this user was in the echo room uh, by using a Twitter and YouTube. This user said escaped from echo room discussing with uh, friends. And also this user said, a smartness is a great tool for maintaining my new moderate conservative status. I greatly appreciate how Smarnius encourages you to consider the other side. Smarnius has become my escape from my echo room of Twitter and YouTube. So I think this is the experience which we always wanted to, we want to provide for users. So we do not encourage um, any particular political uh, view. We encourage escape from echo room. So our news app, our news app will support those people. So on the top of the things, we have a vision personal discovery. Inter integrating those algorithms, we offer the best of both worlds, a content you and you know and love, uh, plus new topics or viewpoint to consider. So we call this approach personalized discovery and it helps users discover content outside of the filter bubble. So personalized discovery is what makes money so engaging uh, because the content always new and interesting. Smart news higher than uh, brand thickness than Google and uh, in the US, average time spent uh, nearly three times the free board. Okay, this is the final slide. So what motivated me uh, is that uh, what motivate what what motivated me is that ultimately, if we can succeed, we can broaden people's mind instead of narrowing uh, instead of our allowing social media to narrow minds in a filter bubble. To do so, we can't just uh, force people to immediately so, uh, reading, start reading academic paper and uh, not, to, uh, not to start reading the articles from the, out, from the other side you, they disagree with. But with uh, personal discovery, we can, we can start with the content they are comfortable and gradually expand their minds with new and more diversified content. We hope that we can, uh, we can positively help the world this way. And we did lots of things toward personal discovery, and, but it's not still perfect. Uh, we are halfway through this journey, and we keep track. We keep tackling uh, problems and passing our mission uh, very seriously every day. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. We have time for some questions if you'd like to ask. And before we jump into that, um, I'm obligated and delighted to say thank you to the following companies for to their generous support to allow us to have these programs. Uh, Future Architect, Kozo Keikaku Engineering, Komatsu, Misoto, Canon, JX Nippon Mining and Metals, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, World Innovation Lab, Akel, ANA, Daikin, Development Bank of Japan, Denso, Kawasaki Heavy Industries, Mitsubishi Corporation, Musashi Sakai Driving School, uh, New Energy and Industrial Technology Development Organization, Panasonic, Tech Firm Group, Tokyo Marine Group, and SMBC. So thank you for uh, allowing us to hold these. So, what I do. Any questions or comments? Yeah, it's a real simple one. What's the, what's the, uh, what's the revenue? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, we yeah we put the advertisement uh, in the feed in the feed. Uh, 
And uh, we have the self-service uh, in Japan advertisement. And, but the, in US, we, we will use a uh, Facebook ad network. So, if, but uh, the, the, uh, the way is uh, different in between US and Japan, but the, we use, we, uh, we make a business advertisement of both of US in Japan. Can you still do your revenue numbers are? What are your revenue numbers? What kind of revenue are you getting per year? Are you allowed to say it? Absolutely. I, 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 so I, I didn't say anything about the revenue. <laughs> so I cannot I cannot say. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll just say we're very happy, especially at the growth rate, which is really <coughs> So um um so do you uh, see any difference in uh I'm not understanding there are a lot of uh, uh, specialists or like uh, engineers in this uh, Bay Area. Is there no more engineers in this area compared to uh, those in Japan? Uh, I think uh, you mean the uh, COVID, right? Yeah. yeah but uh, um, why this happened? So uh, is it just uh, more difficult in Japan to hire that uh, high tech? Uh, high uh, proficient uh, engineers, you know, company compared to the uh, compared to here. Yeah, I think it's a good question. So, yeah, hiring in hiring engineers in Bay Area is very tough, and uh, and uh, engineers in Japan is a good, I think, but so. But we have two reasons to hire engineers here more and more. So first one is a pool, uh, in Bay Area, pool of engineers in uh, big in Bay Area. And uh, so some of them are very low talented, but some of them are very high talented. So, so it is a very big pool in Bay Area. And another one is uh, we have to think about the world, so we don't have to. We don't have. We we don't want to. We don't want to think about only Japan. So engineers here can think about the world, in, including the U.S. So so we uh, so to ex to uh, to be global company, we have to. We think we have to hire here more and more. Can you talk a little about what led you to the sort of default original um, story classifications that appear, like each of the verticals um, in the app? Like how, how you decided on on those as a starting point for um, readers to be able to deselect or, or amplify? <laughs> how, how did you decide? So there's like physics, politics, science, technology. How did you decide on that list? Yes. So, so, yeah, this is a create. Uh, this is create. Uh, so, so this is created by content team, not the engineer. So, content team has a perspective. We uh, they think about how we should, uh, how we should classify. Uh, so, uh, one is. What observations have you made in terms of the consumption, use consumption patterns between the U.S. and Japan? Because I'm assuming that the Japanese version looks different, maybe even have different verticals than the American version. Yeah. So how do we consume these differently? Yeah. And then the second question is, I just downloaded the app for the first time, and I apologize, but I can't figure out how to find two sides when I'm looking yeah, I'm not sure how that works. I just see a list of stories. Yeah. So the as a first as a first question, so Japanese likes the uh, more soft news, I think. So entertainment or uh, more bad bad content, and uh, US so so US uh, people likes the uh, more hard news and politics or uh, national news. And I think this is a, a quite dif different for uh, for me. And also one more thing. So 
Japanese likes the uh, uh, Japanese uh, very uh, so not diversified. So Japanese likes the most uh, Japanese likes the same articles, but the U.S. people are uh, diversified. This person like this article. This person like this article, and this is a, a different uh, part, different behavior in uh, between Japan and in the U.S. So, what is uh, one of the reasons we created the personalization for U.S. 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 is diverse. U.S. was diversified. So, and the second question. So. Could you say again? I'm just looking at your app now. I don't know how many people are familiar with it, but it's new to me. And you were describing that it allows you to see different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. But I don't see how that works. It just seems like a long stream of news yeah. stories. Okay. Oh, there's, yeah. there's, there's a couple different ways. One is if you look at the stream of stories, um, uh, itself, you will see stories um, from different sources so that you might well see a Fox News story next to a Mother Jones story, um, sometimes on the same subject. Um, in addition, you have the ability to add channels, add tabs from favored publishers um, to the Smart News experience so that we have about um, now about 330 um, um, publishers that you can add um, uh, to create individual channels of content um, from those from those sources. So if you're conservative, for example, you can add a Fox News channel, you can add a, a Blaze channel or Washington Examiner channel, or all three. If you're liberal, um, you can add a Mother Jones channel, or you can add um, uh, you know. Uh, Number of TPM talking points, not all have the channel or not, but you can choose from a number of liberal sources, and you can also choose from more straight down the middle um, sources like the Associated Press and Reuters. So you've got the ability to kind of to customize. Um, uh, you ev everybody gets um, a selection of stories that is itself striving to um, reflect diverse um, diverse viewpoints and perspectives. But you also have the ability to add more content from publishers that, that you favor. If you scroll all the way over to the right, um, you'll see a tab called Discover. Um, and um, that lists the categories of publishers, and there are, there are about 330 of them in there. Thank you for the presentation. So, uh, uh, do you feel some merits of? for the technology development, technology absorption by locating in the Silicon Valley? Uh, this is one question. So, uh, second question is, uh, uh, are there some tendency of consumers uh, of the smart news in the US, some Asia, the Russian, human races? So, uh, the first question, I think I, the, uh, the merit or the, the advantage uh, working here is a collaboration with other uh, co other companies. So, one example I introduced Figure Eight. Figure Eight is located in uh, two block away from our new our office, and uh, we can collaborate uh, with uh, other companies easily. And uh, this is one uh, merit. And the second question. So, uh, so we can. Uh, so I might. I would say uh, lots of uh, California uh, people uh, we are users, and uh, so we also have a uh, uh, East Coast uh, people, and uh, so not so many uh, Middle American. Yeah, so yeah, we have, yeah we have to. Say. <laughs> So, <clears throat> based on your slide, uh, I think the last slide or you know, second slide from the last, um, you know, these stories, your service, smart news, overwhelms uh, other, some other services such as Google, yeah, that one. 
uh, Google News or others. Uh, in Japan, for example, I used to use the Gunoxi. Yeah. It is a, a little different service, but uh, can I ask what makes the uh, difference for from the user perspective? For example, the RE adoption for the market or the algorithm to determining the, what news it will project or a user interface or something like that. So in the US? I mean, yeah, in, in the US as well as in Japan. Generally, for this, with this service, yeah. uh, what makes a difference uh, from the other services? I, I know there's so many other uh, yeah. similar services uh, who provide uh, uh, personalization yeah. for the new news. So. so in the so this this survey from the uh, I don't I cannot see the uh, this is not our survey. This is a, a external company's survey, and uh, we have uh, uh, so very amazement. So the difference I said the, uh, I thought uh, UI and algorithm. So UI is uh, uh, so I. So in the US, Smart News UI is uh, quite different from uh, Freeboard Google News. Freeboard is a uh, one article in one screen. So we have uh, we have multiple stories in the one screen. And also, yeah, and also personalized discovery. I think it, it, it works in my perspective, from my perspective. Thank you very much. Are you balancing the content uh, regarding the way of people are reading? Uh, for example, this, if I am a conservative, I am reading, uh, you can see my data, but I, I'm reading, I don't know, Fox News, more than um, the BBC or CNN. And are you balancing my, uh, my reading regarding that? Uh, are you um, pushing me on some content uh, on the liberal uh, point of view? So. Or not? Um, what? And um, it doesn't about uh, uh, how you can uh, use my data, is my personal uh, way of providing your app, or are you searching in my own uh, Google data? Yeah. What is your way of uh, learning about it? So, yeah. So we have uh, we have a personalization, but the, uh, we cannot uh, we cannot distinguish uh, you are conservative or you are liberal. And uh, okay, <laughs> may I pass to Rich? Um, we have if you if you look at the app, there are, there is a on the on the top channel there is a block of news that is not personalized um, or um, only um, lightly with. Well, sometimes if we know you've already read an article, we won't serve you the same article. But for all intents and purposes, that first block on the top channel is not personalized. Everybody basically sees the same stories. Um, underneath it is a block that's labeled for you. Um, and this, um, and this um, uh, is a, a, a block of, that's personalized based on what we have deduced about you from your viewing history. Um, my for you tends to be heavily concentrated with stories about how terrible the San Francisco Giants are. Um, just saying. Um, and you will see, although we try to, we deliberately try to not have politics take over your for you, um, uh, your for you channel, um, because we um, we are trying to broaden your perspective. Um, but you will see. Uh, of someone who's politically conservative may well see more conservative stories in the For You block, um, uh, where, as opposed to someone who's, um, who's more liberal. Um, we don't know who you are. One of the important things to note if you've installed the app is you didn't give us your email address, you didn't give us any personally identifiable information. Um, uh, we don't know who you are. Um, so it isn't as though we are looking at you and saying, you know, aha, we know all this stuff about this person, we know who it is, we know where they are, et cetera, et cetera. 
um, all the all the we're doing um, in terms of personalization is data that we have gleaned from what you look at over time. And the for you section gets better the more you use it. Um, uh, but I think there may be a limit on how many stories about how the giants sucked can actually show up in my for you. Um, but um, uh, but the, it becomes more intelligent the more you use it. The only personally identifiable um, information that we um, that we collect is there is one tab that's labeled social, um, which you don't have to use. But if you enter your Twitter credentials, that page, that channel will be populated um, by um, articles from um, people and sources that you follow on Twitter. Um, and um, so in theory, at least, although we don't do it, in theory, that is personally identifiable information. So when we occasionally, under our privacy policy, when we occasionally get people who say, please, if they send to all their, their various channels, please delete my PII, um, our response is, um, unless you've used the social tab, we don't have any. If you use the social tab, please send us your Twitter handle and we'll wipe, wipe out your record. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we handle that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's much more a marketing question than a um, um, than a. Uh, uh, I'm not sure how I would explain it in an app. Um, um, at the end of the day, you know, the marketplace decides whether we're doing a good job or not. Um, if people um, are getting uh, benefit from the news that they're getting, um, they'll continue to use the app, and if they're not, um, they they don't use it. Um, and if enough people don't use it, we will have to look very hard at our approach. Um, but I'm not sure. I mean, I can see the, the merit of doing that as a, as a marketing tool to try and say, you know, here's what makes us different. Um, but, um, you know, Apple News or um, Flipboard, I don't know other news aggregation um, platform that I, that I know of, um, you know, tries to explain itself in that way. If you have to explain it, if you have to explain yourself that way, I suspect strongly you've already lost the, lost the battle. Um, the goal here is that something, um, that people pick up something that, that, um, that they like, that, um, that surprises and delights them and um, increases their, um, you know, increases their body of knowledge. Um, you know, the, about three, two or three weeks ago, there was an article on the top channel from, I believe, from the Australian Broadcasting Company about um, uh, about um, efforts to preserve um, the um, species of Tasmanian devils. Now, the only Tasmanian devil that I know of was a cartoon character from my childhood. Um, but I read every word of that article. It was a wonderful article. Um, no personalization algorithm that I know of would have necessarily predicted, oh, Rich would read all of an article on Tasmanian devils. Um, but I love that article. And, um, you know, it is that kind of serendipity um, that is one of the things that, um, that I think is part of the appeal of smart news, is you do come across, it's not just that you're a liberal and you come across a, a, a Fox News story that challenges some of your assumptions, that will happen. But it's also the serendipity of coming across something that you didn't know you'd be interested in, that it turns out you're really interested in. But what I don't know is if I look at enough stories about, about um, and maybe you hit can answer this, if I look at enough stories about Tasmanian devils and, and, um, and interesting offbeat science stories, um, will the algorithm, you know, 
is the uh, is the personalization algorithm sophisticated enough to say, oh, Rich, Rich is actually interested in these kinds of stories, and maybe that will start um, showing up um, uh, in my in my for you section. Um, that sort of the goal is to know enough about um, is to learn enough about users to be able to say not just oh this is a liberal let's show them some conservative stories um, or this is liberal let's show them liberal stories but also to say you know what can we um, give this person um, that they may not be expecting but that they'll really really like and that's kind of the holy grail Um, can you explain a little bit more about how your ad system works? So notice that some of them are ads for products, but others are essentially sponsored stories to show up in the stream. Um, can you explain what your policies are for basically maintaining the consistency of the app experience? Because you've got you've devoted so much attention to the algorithm and presenting um, a certain balance of stories to readers. How to make sure that the ads don't disrupt that flow? advertisement so yeah so uh, so I, I as I said so we are using a Facebook network in in US and we have uh, our own net, uh, advertisement network in Japan uh, this is quite different so so uh, in US we just using we just using the advert uh, Facebook advertisement network uh, so we cannot uh, we cannot do uh, we cannot do anything. Uh, we cannot do. Uh, we, we don't have. Uh, we don't have the lots of. We don't have lots of things. Uh, we have to count on the Facebook. Uh, but but the, in Japan we have a lots of. Uh, we have our own advertisement network. We have we our uh, so we our evaluation our uh, our check of advertisement is very strict. So and we can uh, we can we eliminate the uh, lots of uh, fake advertisement or some sometimes. So we are uh, we are healthy in uh, advertisement in Japan, but so we have a tr uh, we have some trouble in US uh, because um, depending on Facebook. All the all the ads in the, in the app are labeled as ads. Um, so. Um, uh, you know, we don't. We, we work very hard to make sure that sponsored content does not sneak into the news portions of the app. So every ad, every ad in those in those channels has the little ad choices box um, and is an ad. Now we had a problem for a while because Facebook's audience network, um, Facebook advertising network, was flooding us with ads that were labeled as ads, but were essentially for fake products or claiming that some celebrity had endorsed this product. So they were labeled as ads, but they were they were still fake. And um, we yelled and screamed at, at Facebook, um, and, um, and they, they put in some new tools to, to um, hopefully prevent all those things. Um, in Japan, because we are bigger in Japan, we have our own ad tech, as you had mentioned, and our own ad network, and we are in much more control of our own um, destiny uh, and fate. Um, my great desire is that we, um, as we scale in the U.S., we eventually bring our own ad tech um, in and um, boot Facebook out um, because I don't like being dependent on third party. Um, and um, but we need to get bigger in the U.S. before before that makes economic sense. Do you have the ability to see differences in user behavior between clicking on the the story stories and the sponsored ad stories. So, can you tell if readers know the difference? Well, they're all labeled as ads. They all have. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not confessing that. I'm just wondering I, if the user behavior shows any consistency. Okay. I don't. I don't think there's any confusion. I think you know, ads are ads, and people are either going to tap on them or not tap on them. Now, Facebook is targeting the ads based on what Facebook knows about you. Um, uh, particularly if you have Facebook, the Facebook app installed on your device, that means Facebook knows um, more about you than we do. Um, and they may serve up an ad tailored to what they think is your, um, are your interests. Um, but that's, um, that's the way Facebook does business. Um, uh, in terms
terms of, of the user behavior, you know, the more targeted the ad, um, the more relevant to you. Um, and that Google works the same way. Um, the more relevant the, the ad is to you, the more likely you are to tap on it. Um, I have another question. On the idea of, of fake news, um, not in the Trump sense, um, but in the real sense, with what's legitimate news and after that versus not. When you were presenting the presentation, and thank you there again, you mentioned that you use a, your system uses an algorithm to scrape and find news stories. Is How do they know the source is um, reliable, or are you only looking at specific um, news sites and sources that you verify? Y yes, so we, we have, uh, actually we have a quite list, and we, uh, we, we eliminated the uh, uh, we have we on, we uh, so we deliver the articles from only our white list. So we we assess the white list every every day. Do you assess the story, the story by story? Not uh, yeah. So we we want to try. I think I'll make a Japanese startup here in the Bay Area where Shadow is a big Japanese company also come to Bay Area and having a hard time to do the business here. What is your success? I think one of the uh, factor is rich, so he joined uh, at the beginning of uh, Smart News US, and uh, so we ha we hired only you. so we didn't before me we didn't uh, we didn't any we didn't send any people from Japan to US we uh, we hire. Uh, we hire uh, people in U.S. only. I think this is uh, uh, one of factors. So we have a, a lot of talented people, so rich, and uh, we have the good marketing people. Uh, so we hired uh, recently uh, good product people. So yeah, here. So I think uh, hiring here is uh, uh, one of the success. One was a factor of successful. One of, one of the things that, that is interesting to me, I, uh, because I am not a, a native of, smart, of, of, a start, of the startup culture, um, I always figured that a, a startup would build from the ground level, from the grassroots up. Um, but um, the advice that I think Kevin Kaise got early on was to um, try to build sort of from the top down. So um, uh, they recruited me um, before I was a vice president with no, I was basically a, a, a general with no soldiers. Um, and, um, and we've actually followed that pattern a couple times um, uh, now where we have, instead of trying to sort of, um, um, you know, build something from the grassroots up, we've tried to find the right person to lead um, uh, you know, lead an effort and then have that person, um, you know, sort of take the lead in assembling the, the team. Um, uh, we're right now looking for a vice president of engineering. Um, uh, obviously, we have a lot of engineers, but um, but the, the management of it has been somewhat fragmented. So we're now looking for a, a VPOE. Um, uh, and if you know anybody really good, um, uh, you know, let us know. <laughs> We're definitely, definitely in the market. Right, on that note, thank you so much.